Did you know that we're not alone? Angels are on assignment, and they are here to help us today. Join us in this episode of Seeking Insight. And those who have insight will shine like the glow of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Join us now for an episode of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Hey guys, welcome to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. I am Rachel, obviously. This is my dad, James. We uh, get to do this together and it's so fun. This is actually something we kind of started during the pandemic when yeah. it started. We started over Zoom together on Facebook and YouTube. And our theme verse from the beginning has been Daniel 12, 3, which says, those who have insight will shine brightly like the expanse of heaven and will lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever, which is, okay, as we're talking about heaven today, we're actually going to be talking about when heaven invades earth, yes. talking about angels, angelic activity in our lives. And this is actually an area that growing up, I longed for, yeah. and I would pray every night before I went to bed with you or mom, mm -hmm. and I would pray that I'd, the Lord would open up my eyes yeah. and I would see angels. That's right. And when I was about, I, when I was seven years old, we went to England. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. You gotta remember that trip. And my eyes were opened up on that trip. And the entire trip, I saw angels all around me. And ever since then, it's like I've been able to sense and know. Um, Feel, perceive, yeah. distinguish. Yeah. There's many different ways of good, perception. Yeah. Some see, internal or external. Some feel, some know. Yeah. There's different manners, ways mm -hmm. of perceiving, distinguishing, discerning this heavenly realm, but it is when heaven mm -hmm. comes to earth. Yeah. Well, we have a verse yeah. that we're going to kind of unpack. And also in a little bit, we're going to be sharing about nine weeks straight of visitations. So you don't want to miss that. But before we go into some of those other things, we're going to lay the foundation yeah. because it is so important to turn to the word of God yes. to get to have scriptural uh, foundation for what we believe, why we believe. And, um, you know, it's really easy to just kind of say, oh, it, I have these experiences. But what's the purpose of experiences if you're not? pointing back to Jesus. That's right. So Hebrews 1, 7 and 14 say, in speaking of angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. And then verse 14 says, are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Yeah. Now, I love these verses. I was given one of many dreams several years ago, in which I was told to study and research the ministry and function of angels. Mm. Well, I had already, when I was pastoring back years ago in the 80s in Warrensburg, Missouri, I had already studied the 300 verses in the Bible on angels. When I was pastoring in Warrensburg, Missouri at Harvest Fellowship, but then we had moved to Kansas City, and I have this dream mm. that the Lord actually said, I commission you, again a commission, to research and study the ministry and function of angels. So I went after it. And when I get focused, I get focused. So I did it. And this becomes a foundational verse. What is it? In speaking of angels, he says, I, he makes them these angelic spirits, mm -hmm. and there's different categories of spirits, the demonic spirits, Holy Spirit, human spirit, angelic spirits. He makes them what? Spirits, flames mm -hmm. of fire. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt the fire? Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt heat? Well, that can be Holy Spirit. 
but it can also be when the temperature in a room shifts yeah. and it becomes all of a sudden, I mean, actual, the climate, the external temperature of a room shifts or fire hits a person. Yeah. That can be the tongue of fire of the Holy Spirit. It can also be seraphim mm. are the fiery ones. That's who the seraphim are. They carry the fire of God, so of the Holy Spirit. And so that's a category of angels. I've studied this. In fact, ended up writing a whole book on this called Angels Today. So I studied over three different decades all 300 verses. Not only that, I ended up collecting 110 books on angels, and I read them. I gave myself to this, which then, after researching and studying, that is then the door open to nine straight weeks of angelic visitation. So push pause on that part, because, but let's look at these verses. Yeah. Angels are spirits, are created beings, by the way. Only God is the only uncreated being. Mm -hmm. They are servants. That means they are not in charge. God is. Yeah. And they are servants and they're flames of fire. Watch what else. They also move with the winds. Mm -hmm. They are winds. They come with the winds. They, they maybe help flow with the winds or even create, in a sense, winds. And they are fire. They release fire. And it says, are they not ministering? They are right. spirits. They're ministering spirits. To who? To those who inherit salvation. Who's that? We are the inheritors of salvation. They minister to God, but we are the inheritors of salvation. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. These two verses alone, out of the 300 in the Bible on angels, give a massive amount of revelation to us. Ground yourself in the Word. And right here, you're going to find angels release fire. Mm. Angels have a ministry, and they come with the wind, they bring wind, and listen to this. Angels create movement. Mm. When angels come, movements occur. You don't know where the wind comes from, and you don't know where it's going. And angels don't allow things to stay stagnant. Mm. Did you ever think of that? Angels create movement, and when they That's enter so a room, things change. And you will change, because heaven has just invaded Earth. I love that so much. I, I like I'm having all these memories yeah. being flooded to my mind where what you're saying is so important about the movement. Yeah. Movement. Yes. And a lot of times when we're praying for breakthrough, yeah. God is he has, is using angels as yes. ministering for those who believe. That's right. And they also come to those who are not in faith. Uh huh. It says, who will inherit salvation? Inherit. Yeah. They're going to inherit. Yeah. They haven't come into their inheritance mm. yet, but they're marked for inheritance. That's cool. Uh-huh. Because they are also angels of breakthrough. Wow. And they come in answer to prayer to help push in answer. Because someone has prayed, the wow. angels are released in obedience to prayer to push, 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 to create a movement to create to bring them from one point to another. Wow, I love that. I love it too. Well, stay tuned huh. because we're about to share about nine weeks of straight visitations. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to find out more about James Gall and his ministry. Read his latest articles. Grow in your relationship with God. Enjoy James Gall's poignant articles that will inspire you and give you deep insight from heaven itself. Enroll in his powerful classes. Grow in your relationship with God. 
Access hundreds of free audio and video messages ready to revitalize you and give you hope. You will have access on demand. Check out his resource store. Cultivate revelation in your walk of faith. These dynamic resources will equip you and light your spiritual fire. You will find that these dynamic resources will teach you how to walk in the supernatural every day. Go to jamesgall.com and godencounters.com to access James Gall's website. And now back to Seeking Insight. Hey guys, welcome back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Today we're talking about when heaven invades earth. So our subject is angels. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> I grew up in a family where it was a very normal subject. Yeah. You know, we're about to share about a nine week straight visitation thing that you and mom experienced. Yeah. And so growing up, you know, earlier in this episode, yeah. you, were, you were mentioning about the 300 scriptures that right. you studied. So there was a point where um, I, it was so normal that it in was. my school, I was supposed to write a paper and I wrote yeah. a paper about this angelic experience uh -huh. and <laughs> and I got called on it. Oh, I remember And now. they were concerned, didn't they call you? Oh Mom, yeah, now I remember. Yeah, <laughs> and they were like, we're concerned about your daughter. Oh yeah, I remember this now. <laughs> she's not rooted. Oh right? yeah, and you're not rooted. Oh, excuse me, they were cessationists. <laughs> well, and then then you go, you go. Well, have you read all 300 scriptures? Uh -huh. there are? Yeah, I did do that. I actually had a meeting with them. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you know that it, that's something that just is kind of fun uh -huh. about. It's growing up. I get yeah. asked all the time, "What is it like to grow up with James Gall as your dad?" You know, with yeah. um, having. I'm not prophet as yeah. a father. <laughs> what, what is that like? And I could tell you stories where you you called me on like you knew what happened at school before I told you yeah. you know because God is just he's just cool like that you know well God cares about what we care about yeah. you, know? you know and we were just talking about how God cares about the details that's right and so you know there was a season in <laughs> yeah. mom's life oh, where yeah. she had little kids you were traveling uh. I was one of the little kids oh, yeah. you know and was crying out for God to encounter her mm -hmm. you know it's, she had no time I, I fully relate to this. You do now. You know, if I was not on this trip, I would be fully in that moment oh, right yeah, now. Right. Like, God, God sees where are we are. Are you glad are you, that you're on this trip? I miss my kids. I miss oh, them. I know you do. <laughs> I even have a ring sent from my from my oldest little yeah. girl, her little butterfly ring. Mm -hmm. I miss them. Yeah, right. But you know, Mom had this. Um, she had nine straight, nine straight weeks right. of visitations, right. and this was God actually answering a cry of her heart. That's so right. share a little bit about what this kind of was. Yeah, well, she was actually physically pretty weak because we had four miracle kids, mm -hmm. and three of them were stacked on top of each other. And you're like 16 months apart, 18 months mm -hmm. apart type of thing. So she was actually kind of, you know, a little bit depleted yeah. in a sense. And she, her Bible was her best friend. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, okay? Her Bible was her best friend from childhood. And, but she was at a point where she just didn't have much time to have time alone with God. And so I remember her leaning up against the wall and going, like, God, I don't need time. And he spoke to her and he said, I'll make time. Yeah. I'll make time in the night season. Yeah. And that's when her dream life exploded yeah. that we've talked about in previous broadcasts. But it wasn't just that. Bob Jones calls me up on the phone. Dear seer prophet Bob Jones. <laughs> and he calls me up on the phone and he says, Whip, <laughs> I saw your wife this morning. And I go, okay. And he said, she will be the first of 300 women that's going to be released into the prophetic. And I go, I did not know what to do with that <laughs> because I was already known for the prophetic. But he wasn't talking to me. He was talking about Michael Ant, which he. Well, and at this point, she was very much like a reserved yes, to herself. Conservative. He, I called her the Betty Crocker homemaker, and she was. Mm -hmm. And she was adorable, she congenial, and everyone loved her. And there was a good reason, because she was adorable and lovely mm. and congenial. And so anyway, but I filed it, because I really didn't have a 
page for it. But it was true. Because on the Day of Atonement that October, which was our oldest son's birthday, at midnight, I was teaching at the Grace Center before there was the International House of Prayer Forerunners School that's okay. in Kansas City. I was teaching at the Grace Center and I was teaching a night class. I had my assistant. We were driving home. It was a day of atonement. I had presented the class before the Lord. I let off my assistant and I said to him, I said, God is going to speak tonight. Let him off. I drive home. I get in bed. She's asleep. I go to sleep. At midnight, a lightning bolt crashes in our backyard at 11.59. I suddenly wake up, read the digital clock, 11.59, but what happened was the lightning bolt crashed in the backyard, but it came through our bedroom window, and a man stands at the end of our bed. Mm -hmm. Huh? What? Huh? Wow. This man stands at the end of our bed. Michael Ann is still asleep. A ball of light, fireball, sits over our bedroom dresser and supernaturally illuminated our bedroom with the light of God for five straight hours. And our room was filled not with the presence of the destiny of God, with the fear of God. Mm -hmm. And I am electrified because this man looks at me and I look at him, a messenger, it was an angel. And after one minute, 11.59, then it turns to midnight, 12.00, and he speaks to me and he says, watch your wife, yeah. I'm about to speak to her. Now, I wasn't offended, I wasn't whatever, but there was a little bit of analyzing going, like, why are you going to talk to me? <laughs> And, and then the angelic messenger disappeared, but the angelic presence and the presence of God increased. Then I'm left, in a sense, alone, but I'm not alone. Then Michael Ann wakes up. I'm trembling. And sometimes, read the book of Daniel, when the presence of God really comes in the fear of the Lord, you tremble. Mm -hmm. You tremble in His presence. Mm -hmm. Then. I turned to her. I did not say what the angel said. And this was not our first time to be visited by angels. It was not our first. We had other, many other encounters previously. Around the announcement of our children almost every time. And the angel says to me, and I, watch your wife, I'm about to speak to her. And I said now to Michael and my wife, I said, an angel has just come. We sat there and we trembled in bed together for 24 minutes. We prayed and we said, Lord, if this is you, give us a sign, etc. I then fell asleep and I left her with God and the angels. Well, you know, we're going to expound on this more, yeah, so, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. We will be back with more of Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com to get his powerful and life-changing resources. If you want to grow in areas that we've been talking about today, like the seer realm or the angelic realm, things like that, we have prepared the Supernatural Bundle, which yeah. includes the seer book. It includes releasing spiritual gifts yeah. today and angelic encounters. Dad, tell me a little bit about these books. I love these books. Oh. I wrote them. <laughs> well, this, yes. this is your best seller. It is. This is actually an international bestseller. It's been translated in 20, 25 different languages. And so it is the prophetic power of visions, dreams, okay. and open heavens. And it has got 300 scripture references in this one book. And then in Angelic Encounters, it too has over 200 scripture references. It's got a depth of church and Jewish history and a lot about activity of angelic encounters today. 
This, I go through nine spiritual gifts. Actually, there's 20 some mentioned in the Bible. But I go through the three vocal gifts, the three revelatory gifts, and the three power gifts in great detail. And I make it accessible. Mm -hmm. I make it transferable. And I try to really make it where you have it understandable where you can walk in the gifts today. And then there's a free bonus. The free bonus is this amazing message, Angels Aware for You. And so the total value of this is $56, that you can go for this total offer of only $38 again. Go to James Gall or GodEncounters.com for this special TV show offer. To get these resources, call 1-877-200-1604 or log on to GodEncounters.com or JamesGall.com. And now back to Seeking Insight. Hey guys, welcome back to Seeking Insight with James and Rachel. Today we're talking about angels when heaven invades earth. And right now you're sharing um, this really <laughs> riveting story of angels, or an angel that came, encountered you, spoke, I'm about to speak to your wife. Right. So she wakes up and then what happens? And then I fell asleep <laughs> and then an angel actually lays hands on her back and she got heavenly deliverance from the fear of man and the fear of rejection. And she could feel and she could hear herself moaning and groaning to such a degree that she felt like she was a changed person. She wasn't sure if she was alive or dead, to be honest. She actually got up. She felt like she was like Moses. And she got up and she went into the bathroom. She took her pulse. She got up and went into the bathroom to look. She thought maybe her hair had turned white. And she looked to, at herself. She actually did look different in those days. Yeah. And, um, and then she comes back into bed. I then wake back up and we literally start praying. Our son, your brother Tyler, is laying on the floor. We prayed to God to give a confirmation. Later that morning, he wakes up and he goes, Dad, I just had a dream that an angel came and visited our house. That night, Justin, our oldest son, your oldest brother had a dream, and his bedroom was right above, about this particular horse that had come, and an angel had come and visited. And so the Lord gave confirmation through our sons. And what ended up happening, it was not just one night from midnight to five, that's five is a number of grace, of an electric fireball of energy and light light, guys. Daniel 12, 3. This was a forerunner experience. It was about, I'm about to speak to my bride. This was about raising up women. It was about women also having an equal voice. This was about prophets. This was about the restoration of raising up the bride of Christ. This was about deliverance of the fear of man and the fear of rejection. This was about so many things that we walked out together as a couple yeah. in a test mm -hmm. of a control spirit. Would I control her wow. or would I let her change? And we walked that out together. And it was a glorious test, and we passed. And, but what happened was my arena of hearing God started drying up, and I would still be out on the circuit traveling, and I would have to call home to find out what God was saying, <laughs> because now God was visiting her every night from midnight to 5 a.m. And she was Betty Crocker, homemaker, braiding the girl's hair, and she couldn't do it. 
and whatever. And it was amazing and it was crazy and it was awesome. And we have pictures to this day, family pictures, and she looks very ethereal. <laughs> so here's a verse I want to give you and then we're going to pray. Because it was nine straight weeks, folks. Nine straight weeks. And it was right after this. Nine is completion. It was a mini pregnancy. Nine. Fullness. Nine gifts, nine fruit. Nine straight weeks. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts who minister of his, ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Angels go forth obeying the voice of his word. How do they go forth? They go forth because God himself speaks. They hear his voice in heaven and they go. They go forth because man prays in earth. Prayers are heard in heaven. They go forth in answer to our prayers. And God says, they prayed, go forth. God speaks, and He speaks here. And it's called a rhema word is heard, and then man echoes God's voice. And then man can say, because faith rises up, and then we don't command angels, but there is a voice of God that is in us. And then we say, go forth. And they go forth obeying the voice of his word. And right now, I want to say, there's faith right now in this atmosphere because we are not alone. And such as has been given unto my family, I say to you, you are not alone. The ministering spirits of God, the flames of fire are available unto you. And they come also in answer to prayer. And all I want you to say right now is help. Just say help. And I have a word for you. Help is on the way. Fire is on the way, movement of the winds of God to change things in your life is on the way. An invasion of God is on the way, because if God can change things in my life and in my family, God is not a respecter of persons, and He can do the same for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, you know, really quickly, we have got to close this up, but I feel strongly that there is a, a mom at home that yeah. really, Come really on. relates to this. Yes. And you've been crying out. You're like, God, I want, I know you see me, but I want to encounter you. And God does see you. And we just release that breakthrough over you. In Jesus' name, that you are loved, that you are wanted, and that God has things to release to speak to you even in the night. And we thank you for joining us on Seeking Insight with James and Rachel, where together we're, we're running, running after our, our friend, Jesus. God bless you.